Um, yeah, this is great. Um, it's really good to get started. So thank you everyone for joining us today. What I'm going to be making, um, as Phoebe said, I'm going to be making a kind of collage from my um, Misfit series. And then I'm also going to um, paint, make a painting from the collage in the second half of the session. So um, there's quite a lot to do. So I'm just really going to get started. So I'm going to kind of use this, I love this magazine, 10 magazine, and I've worked with them a lot and I'm working with them again in the future in their next issue. So this is like 10 men, which is like their men's edition. And um, they're great. I, and I really like working with them um, collage through magazines because they're they're just really exciting to work with and um, I like what they um, say about kind of masculinities you know they're kind of it's they're contemporary and um, you, you know the world it's kind of exciting and alluring but um, it, my interest in masculinities in that sense I, so I'm just going to literally start I've actually presented taken out most of the um, the collage portraits so I don't actually need the magazine now and um, I'll show you this is kind of I've already kind of made a collage in advance so this is to give you an idea of the collage that we'll be making and um, in this session I'm going to be kind of making it all the time but you don't have to do that you can just take your time. Um, this is a, this is another collage that I'm kind of currently working on, and this is another watercolor that I'm kind of currently working on. So, you know, don't feel that you have to rush. You can take your time. Um, so these are the images that I'm going to be working from. So I'm just going to get started and just go straight in. Wonderful. So I really like this head. So I'm going to start with this head. And this is just, you know, Dana Rowney um, paper that I'm using. And here I'm just going to use basic print stick. Because the, um, if I can get it off. <laughs> Using print stick, you, you know, it's fine. I, my, my collages, um, in the main, I just use them as a means to an end. I don't actually kind of exhibit them. And um, so I don't really kind of worry too much about its kind of archival properties. If you were, and, and, Print stick is really good, it's strong, it holds. And I've had collages, which I have exhibited, which are like 10 years old, and they're still really strong. But if you were a collage artist and you wanted to kind of have something which was archival and you wanted to be sure about that, then you could use golden, this golden paint. Mm -hmm. this, this is like regular gel or soft gel. It's really good. It's just polymer, which you'd use in acrylic painting. So that's that. And this, I'm literally just going to just stick in. And really get it covered. So the Misfit series, when I make them, what interests me about actually making a collage is, you, you know, when you think about the kind of the magazine itself, you know, you know, at the level of just reading it and engaging with it, you're just a kind of passive consumer. But then if you actually kind of, for me personally, I felt, you know, if you actually kind of take it apart and start looking at it and kind of playing around with it, then you're actually kind of engaging with it in a much more critical way. And I like this line here with the hat, how it's kind of very diagonal. So I want to almost get that the sense of that here with this image. So I'm literally 
you're going to take the paper and you don't have to worry too much. David, we just had a question just asking what blank um, paper book are you using for the collage? So what, what type of paper is that in, in your sketchbook? So this is like a daily Dale Rowney sketchbook. So it's acid free, um, 150 GM. And I just buy these from like um, somewhere like the London Graphic Center or just any art shop or you can buy them online. This is an A3 book. This is uh, Louis just checking in. For any units who are joining, we've we've sent you the watercolour paper and some other paper that has says hospital rooms on it. So we would recommend using the uh, the slightly thinner hospital rooms paper for doing your collage on. But sort of any paper can, can work really, can't it? David? Yeah, so I like that. You know, and I always try and think about how I'm going to get this before I stick it on because you want to kind of think about it, where it's going to go. Because once you've actually glued it, it's not so easy. And as I was mentioning before about you, you know, making these misfits and about kind of masculinities. I, I, you know, I like the idea that I kind of see them, them as kind of performative. So they're kind of fluid and in flux, you know, and I quite like that because, you know, making the misfits, it's almost like they reflect kind of masculinities themselves in the way that, in the way that they kind of have their kind of strengths, but they're kind of vulnerable too. So in that sense, I see them as kind of performative because they're, you know, constantly changing. So there's a kind of dynamic about it. And I like this ear and this pink background. And I think it would kind of work well to this ear here. So I'm literally, And this paper's great as well, like the magazine, because, you, you know, it's thick and it's got a good quality. So I don't need to kind of use a scissors or anything. I can just use my hands to tear. And there's another question for you, David. Um, how long have you been working on the Misfit series? Uh, since my, just before I had a solo show with a gallery um, in London in two, 2007. So I kind of made them for that show. And so it's been about sort of 12 or so years now. So I like this. Mm. So that's going to go there, as you can see. So. I love how quickly the composition just happened, like with only, yeah, only three different things and it's already such a beautiful composition. Amazing. Yeah, it does. They can come together very quickly. And also for me, I think um, I quite like it where like the, um, I keep the proportions quite similar to reality so obviously some collage artists they might want to kind of make the eyes really big or dramatize that and make kind of bug eyes and that but for me personally i just feel like um keeping that kind of sense of proportion it has a kind of it makes it more uncanny in a way it has a kind of it has this sort of strange convincing sense of reality. <laughs> so you kind of almost kind of do a double take. Mm. At least that's sort of one of my feelings about it. So I've got this one. 
I've got another piece. So it's kind of good, always kind of have the, everything out and thinking, where am I going? Which way do I want? And I really like this, this eye and I like this, this, this lip. So I'm going to take just this section. Another question for you also. Um, do all the photos from the book and background picture have to be the same size or is it okay if they're all different? Yeah, I think you can mix it up. I, you know, it's up to you because, you know, the, 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 there's really no rule, I would say. I think you just need to kind of, if you wanted to take this approach, just engage with it in a way that kind of works for you because collage is such a broad, such a broad medium. See, I, mean, I only want the lips of this. <laughs> you know, I know there's, there's many ways of approaching collage. Um, such a, you know, even on hospital rooms, you can have a look at one of my um, old class, classmates at Goldsmiths, Abigail Reynolds, she also did a hospital rooms um, class like this, and she works in collage. It's quite funny because when we were at college together, and neither of us worked in collage then. But so have a look at that art school, and you know you'll see a different approach. So you know there's some great collage artists out there. You know, particularly for me, I think using um, mass media, you know, I'm very influenced by uh, people like Richard Hamilton and John Stasekar. Yeah, and it, just to say, if you do want to check out the Abigail Reynolds um, Digital Art School session, that's on our YouTube channel. Um, so do have a look there. I was also thinking, um, David, about, because um, I know someone asked about when your Misfits series um, came about, but I wanted to also ask about um, your kind of, the theme of masculin masculinity and when you started, um, that started coming into your art practice, or has it always been there? Well, it was really, um, I, I think I started to kind of make, make the Misfits first. And so I, I actually, I like this, I like this part of this neck here. So I, I'll get, I just, I will answer that question. I just, cause I'm working quickly. I like this red here, but I want to kind of make it this kind of really electric blue. So that's what I'm going to do next. Yes. Sorry, so to answer that question, I, I did actually kind of make the Misfits first. And, you know, I, I was just enjoying making them and I wasn't kind of thinking too much about it because I was kind of, I, I had a part of my practice where I was kind of looking at, um, I was looking at kind of animal uh, animal transformation, like werewolves and things like that. And um, in a way, the kind of misfits kind of took over. And then I kind of thought about them um, in a much more discursive way, really kind of thinking about, um, how masculinities are kind of represented today in mass media and, and just in culture and um, bringing that to the fore, really. So I'd like to get to the eyes because I can imagine that we're getting quite close to the end of the, um, the session. We've got around five minutes left, probably for this exercise. Yes. Um, Let's see, I want to put that in there. We'd also love to hear from from um, everyone else's experience of this exercise and what what you've kind of been making and what um, has come out of it. Um, obviously, you'll be able to share these as well. But if if there's any, if you have any sort of interesting. Um, things about the process that you want to share from doing it, please.
please feel free to drop us a note in the Q&A box. And then I love this eye, it's, it's really strong in the glasses. But if I take it out of the glasses, so you don't actually see that they are glasses, it kind of makes it more mysterious. And you can, you know, when you tear, almost don't worry about it too much. And if it, if it rips, it's not the end of the world. And if you can see almost like where it tears, you have these kind of like the, the white, the white paper gets revealed where the, um, where the paper tear, where the paper tore, there's a, there's a Russian artist called Ilya Kabakov, and he actually makes collages paintings. And at each kind of fra edge of each fragment, he actually actually paints in um, the white tear of the paper, which they're great. And you really get a sense of that kind of separation and the fragmentation. So I'm going to put this eye there and then when you change the eye it really i do think it actually starts to kind of transform the picture and i'll put the other eye in So we just had a message from uh, Wendy, David, and she said she's just using four pieces, so keeping it a bit simpler. And Absolutely, she's, yes. She's using PVA instead of Pritt stick. Yes. So I'm gonna do, I like this here. And I think it's fine if you have this kind of misregistration. So this kind of, the side of this nose and there, you know, it kind of mimics this kind of doubling with the ear and the ear there. And I like that, so I think I'm gonna keep that. there so already I think you really get a sense of Love it. a different figure and you know you can always then like you know then crop it and think about mm. which areas but I think you know you already get a sense of um, you, 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 you know a new sense of an, a new figure because in a, in a way that's what I really kind of like about cut and paste and collage. It's um, it's very punk in a way. And when you think about the ethos of punk, it's like, um, you, you know, there's this kind of 
wreckage and then it's kind of like things gathered and put together in, in, in you know from from the wreckage and kind of figuring things out and um and that's what I think I like about them because they have attitude and um so from that what I think I'm going to do I'm kind of happy with this so I think I'm going to move on to doing the painting start part of the session does anybody have any questions at this point before we leave the actual collage um, would you be able to hold it up to this camera so we can see it as a different view? Um, but I just think that's fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, can you see? I didn't yeah. actually realise it was that big, actually, when looking at the area view. Incredible. Uh, can you see from here? Yeah, that looks great. Um, there's another question from Sarah as well of asking if you've thought about working backwards kind of the way of like either painting a series of portraits and then putting those paintings um, into collage. She was saying that she loves deconstructing in her own work um, and so finds it quite inspiring. It's given her a lot of ideas. Yeah, I think so. I have thought about it before. I think one of the things that, um, you know, I first and foremost, I felt like I was a painter and having a disability, um, you know, it's quite difficult to kind of go, here, there and everywhere. And, you know, so I felt like that's why I kind of really kind of loved magazines because they were there and it was like I could kind of delve into the world in, in that way. So I almost found like I wanted to kind of find a subject to paint uh, just so that I could just kind of paint freely. And um, so that's kind of how they came about. And in a way that I kind of felt like I, kept them as the very distinct things. Like I would make the collage and then make paintings from the collage. And I have kind of tried to kind of bring in elements of collage and putting them back into the paintings. Um, I have a friend who does that, Alicia Paz, and she's really successful at, at doing that. And um, I've only kind of at the moment found a way of doing it um, in, in studies that I, I haven't really kind of found a way that I've found satisfying to kind of work backwards and actually put the collage elements into the paintings. Um, I think it's more to do with the scale that I'm kind of working at, but you know, yeah, it's always good things to think about in, for the future. So I'm gonna kind of make, go on to doing the painting. So I need to kind of make a bit of space and move all this out of the way. We just had a shout out from Murphy saying, beautiful, love your way of working. Oh, thank you. So. Always try to be organized with your working methods. And so, so I'm just gonna close that book so that I've got, I've given myself some more room. So literally, when I'm painting, I've just got some white paint on my fingers. There's another, uh, another message from Sarah. Um, just found it interesting thinking about, I guess for all of us to think about as well, of what we consider kind of finalized or finished pieces. Um, and she thinks that your collages are quite beautiful in themselves. Um, yeah. I think those well, yeah, spending so much time on this to only be kind of like a means to an end is a really interesting thing to think about as well. 
everything's always in that kind of process of kind of, you know, where does it kind of begin and end? And so, you know, it's, it's always kind of really open. I'm just trying to think, I'm going to be working from here. Can you see okay down? Because I've got my palette here. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. Maybe just move, if you move the, um, the paper up a bit. Yes. Um, that that's great. How's that? Can you see? That, it? Yeah, that's really great. If if you just move the paper up slightly so we can see the yeah, that's fab, fabulous. Great. So I've drawn out the the collage in advance, and um, if I've looked at kind of the highlights, I've used um, masking fluid to kind of mask it out. I've got a good tip if you're using masking fluid. Don't use a brush if you use masking fluid. Use uh, one of these. They come in. They're called a color shaper, and they come in different sizes. And they have rubber on the ends of them, so you can like you just dip it into your uh, masking fluid. And I just put it on the like the whites of the eyes and on the lips. And what and, is uh, masking fluid, David? Pardon? What is masking fluid? Masking fluid, it's um, it, it, it's like just a, a rubber, rubber barrier that you put on to the picture. So if you have the like the whites that you want to retain, such as here and here in the eyes, or say the white, the, the light in the lips that you want to retain. So you kind of put that on your watercolor paper and let it dry, and then you can paint over it and the paper's protected then. And so then at the end of the picture, you know, they, they kind of had a kind of brightness because it kind of comes through. So I'm literally going to start now. And, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to work from the kind of background to the foreground. So I just take my picture and think, which is, you know, the color shall I start with? And, um, I'm going to change my palette and have my palette because I'm just using this play. You know, you can use anything to play um, that's ceramic or, um, you know, no, I've got trays with, you know, which I have the half pans in. So, but I always, it, it's just a nice way of working because I use, um, I make large watercolors too. So having the plate is quite good because I can kind of use the tubes and mix a lot of colours. Um, for this session, I'm not going to use many colours at all. Um, I'm just probably going to use one yellow, um, two reds, which probably my um, like my violet red, which is your alizarin permanent or um, permanent rose. And the other red is my cadmium, and two blues, which is like a, a darlow blue, which in your packs is like a similar to the um, cobalt. Probably mine is more to the leans towards a kind of bluish green, but and then um, a reddish blue, which is um, ultramarine. So when I look at this picture. I really like this kind of dark maroon background. And, you know, to get that, I use a limited palette, so it's a lot more simple. So I'm just going to use this um, cadmium. So these would be the little square things that you got yeah. in, the, in the packs. Yes. So they're, they're different to your tubes, aren't they, a little bit? Yes, but they're the same. But, but the principle is the same. And what, you, you know, and one thing I should say before I start, if you're doing watercolor, do use watercolor paper. I can't use the paper that I've just been making my collage on because it just won't get a good result. And this paper is just lantern paper. 
it's pretty inexpensive and um, this is just an A5 pad and you don't worry about gumming it or, or that because even if the paper buckles it's good paper and it will just it will settle down again so to start I'm going to you know it's a, so it's like a maroon red so the closest to maroon I think is uh, like a red so it's a very dark red so I'm going to add to that my ultramarine to get a purple and then I'm almost already close to my target. Couple questions for you. Do you have any tips for removing the masking fluid so that it doesn't rip the paper? Uh, no, no. I would say don't leave the masking fluid on. So I'm adding yellow to this to make it even darker. And then also, what kind of brushes are your favorite to use for watercolors? Yeah, I'll just, um, so to answer the first question about the uh, masking fluid, don't leave the masking fluid on for too long, because if you do, then it will rip the paper. Most of the papers, they don't, like this paper doesn't tend to rip. Some of the thinner papers, do tend to rip. So um, it's just a question of trial and error. But the worst thing for the paper ripping is if you leave it on too long. So I'm going to, I've used a smaller brush now because I'm looking at these kind of negative spaces in in the, um, the collar. So I can just go in here and here. So this brush that I'm using to kind of block in the backgrounds, this is by Pro Arte, and um, at least for the connoisseur, uh, I like it because it's they're, they're, it's got a red tip at the end, so they're easy to identify. They're quite inexpensive because it's a mixture of sable and synthetic. So, but even though it's got a synthetic. It's a really good brush, so I'm just um, locking in that. I want to get a really good dark for this area here. So for that, I'm just going to use this burnt sienna, which is on the pack. Having a cover, having those good, you know, your blues and your reds and the yellow, which I mentioned before. They're great single pigments, but um, it's really good handy to have your a couple of earth colours like your um, your burnt sienna, your your yellow ochre, because it's difficult to kind of make um, earth colours from these single pigments. And so I can get a great black if I mix together ultramarine and burnt sienna. And also, David, so is this kind of now? taking the collages that we worked on before and then transferring, um, translating them into watercolor? Yes. So I'm just making a color, a watercolor from the, um, from the collage that I made before. It's actually, I'm actually working from the one that I, an earlier one that I made. Just because I thought to save time, I, I did a drawing so that you know we didn't have to cover the labor time with that. So I go around it and um, I like this pink area here. Now, one thing that I will mention is because that's really, really light, I will add Chinese white to the to, to the mix. So I'm adding Chinese white to my To my rose and then I get this really nice the thing about watercolor is you know you only can make a couple of layers two or three layers and then it actually it actually starts to go dark so if you can you, you know if you if, if you come in your first layer put in like um the white the the Chinese white you just give yourself a bit more kind of room. 
And often what I do also is it's really indispensable. You can use um, sponges or tissue. I've got, um, this is just kitchen roll. And then I just use it to like clear my palate. And then I'm just good to go again. And so I'm gonna put in the yellows now. Always try to leave space on your palette to uh, make clean yellows because most of your colors will make yellow go green. So, you know, I'm working very, very quickly here. You don't have to work very quickly. And again, I'm using, um, adding a bit of that Chinese white. I use Chinese white. It's really kind of soft and forgiving. I don't use, um, I, I don't use the other white, titanium white. Obviously I do if I'm making my um, oil paintings, but I don't, I don't use it in, um, watercolor because I find it a bit heavy. Some artists use um, white gouache for the whites of the eyes, things like that, if you wanted to kind of put them in afterwards. But personally, I don't. So I'm just going around. And literally, I, I, at this stage, I'm just blocking in. We just, we had a really lovely comment um, from someone who just says, um, I love your work and you're adapting to bringing the world into your studio via, coll via collage when you cannot necessarily get out into the world, especially right now, just gorgeous and inspiring. Oh. And we also had an earlier question um, that was just asking whether your work's been published in that the magazine that you showed us, the 10, because you said that you worked with them. Yes. In that current issue, the one that I'm actually making this collage for, I actually collaborated with them quite extensively. So they had, um, they used about six of my paintings. So that there was um, throughout the magazine to kind of illustrate different stories. It's still in the shops, I think. Oh, really? So it's, um, it's the latest issue. So under, I really like this um, collar here, this kind of electric blue. And so for that, I'm going to kind of use my far logo blue. This is a really strong pigment. Um, so you have to be quite careful with it, but I really like using it. It's very, it's, the closest is the, um, you're in, in the packs of the half pounds is the cobalt. So if I mix David. marine, to my Farlo Blue, I will get a cobalt. Because a cobalt's just like a really like, um, you, a, a really bluish blue. David, sorry to interrupt, we just lost uh, your phone camera. Right, okay. Can you, can you see on there? It might be that it's, um, sorry to interrupt your process. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, so I'm just putting this. So as you can see, the, the paper's buckling. Um, and, but, it, but when it's dry, I don't worry about that because it will settle down again. Um, and I'm working fast here just because of the limitations of the class, but you know, I might put in some parts now and you know, go and make a cup of tea or whatever and mm -hmm. and then come back to it. So mm. and do you do you always use watercolor? Do you also use acrylic and oil? And is there a different process for those paints, those types of paints? Uh yeah, the well when I, I'm mainly, I'm mainly using just oil paintings, the paintings that you can see behind me. 
and I tend to use the the the, the same the, the same colours in my oil paintings. Um, I probably use more more more, more pigments, more colours in my oil paintings, but for my watercolours, I'm really kind of tend to keep it simple. Um, obviously, yeah, I use titanium white a lot more in my oil paintings and I don't use that at all in my watercolour. Mm. And uh, all the colours that I use and make, I really make sure that they're like light fast. And that means that like, you know, they're not fugitive colours. So they're not going to fade over time. Um, and that's the same with my watercolour pigments. So they're not, you know, they've got great light fastness. So I know that like, um, they, they won't fade and they'll last for years. So that's important because, you know, obviously there's a vast array of paints to choose from in the art stores, but some of them are there for, you, you know, to give artists choice. So many of the colors are fugitive. So you have to be careful if you don't want your pictures to be fair to fade, make sure that you, 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 you know, choose pigments which are really, really light fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go in to make my skin tones now. And for that, because I'm going in, it's still like my first layer and I can see the whites, I'm going to mix. I'm going to start off with some um, of the Chinese white. It's kind of gone bluish, so I'm picking up some other colours, but I'm not worried too much because I'm just going to add a bit of yellow and a bit of red. I don't know, you know, when people say what is a flesh tone, you know, it changes all the time, especially <laughs> if you're using a, a sort of Caucasian skin tone. Um, <laughs> it's so much dependent about the local colour, which is what the actual um, thing is that you're depicting. And then that's kind of changed by the light of this one is kind of much cooler than the light here. So, you, you know, you just have to kind of determine what what the um, thing is that any one time that you're painting. So I want to add some more yellow to that. And now I'm going to change my brush. So if I can find it. Yes, this brush I'm using, this is a, just a pure sable brush. Again, this is by Pro Arte. I think this is a by, um, it's called a Rene, Renaissance. And this is a, there's no reason why it's just, this is 100% sable and that one was a mixture of the two. I, you know, you're always trying different things out. And, you, you know, I just pick it up in the art shop. I also use these um, Spanish brand, Escoda. Um, that's again, that's like a, Kalinsky sable, and they're just great to work with. So I'm, I'm blocking in the um, so I just cover everything as I'm first going in, and then if you actually look on the right of this, can you see on the right of my collage? it's a lot lighter than here where it's darker. So where I've painted, I will just go over. Where, I, where it's light, I will just put water and that will just dilute. That will dilute the picture. So that, you, you know, I know that the tones are lighter there. You don't notice in the first layer, but as you build it up, if you keep using that principle, so then certain areas are denser than other areas. Now I'm going to do this area and make it slightly cooler. This area where the mouth is, it's a lot cooler than the warmth of the area where the nose is. So I'm going to add a bit of, a bit of blue. 
to that mixture that I had. A couple questions about kind of paints and watercolors. Um, in your experience, would you prefer buying watercolors in pans or in the tubes? Uh, either or. Um, I, I use both, but um, as I say, because I was making, I make large scale watercolors, which are really, really big. And if you're making really big watercolors, then the tubes, I think, are easier. I, I, I just easier, but um, often when I'm working small, I'll use the pans too. So can you see that I've changed? I, I've, I, I added some blue, and so that's now a lot cooler than the, the, the more orangey warmth. Of the, so even though they're both skin tones, they're very different. Mm. And obviously if I'm working in fragments, it's about difference. So you're kind of trying to kind of utilize that all the time. So what do you think about, I guess, kind of working across mediums of, because I know some people are using acrylics if they don't have watercolors or I guess in terms of collage, how do you think that works as well? Well, I tend to kind of use the same pigments so I don't kind of get too confused. And, um, and I think, you know, try and stick to things that kind of, you know, translate. Because, you, you know, keep things simple, especially when you're starting out, because, you know, there's so much choice, which is great because artists all want to work in different ways, but you can get really overwhelmed by choice. So in a way it's kind of best just to kind of try and keep things simple. So. Amazing. So we've, we've run over a bit, but we're coming up to um, five minutes to three. So maybe um, if we start, if anyone wants to write any comments to David about um, the workshop or what they've made, now's a good time. And maybe if we just wrap it up um, in the ne next couple of minutes, but um, yeah. I'll, what I'll do is I'll put in the eyes and I'll show you. So for this eye, this is a really intense red. So I'm going to mix my cadmium and my rose, and then I've got the red. And then you see this black here with this black. So I'm going to mix again my cadmium separately. The opposite of the cadmium is your cyan blue, which is like, you know, just mixing because these, these pigments are complementary, which mean they're opposite to one another um, on the color wheel. Just mixing the two together, I make, you can make a really strong black. And now with that black, I'm going to get really small. I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to put in the blacks of the eye. And then can you see this shadow? The shadow is just really dramatic studio lighting and then I whip my brush and then I'm going to go in with the red has it gone off yeah your phone is it might have just died <laughs> Yes, yeah, so. you're doing that. Where's it coming? I heard a sound that sounded a bit ominous. <laughs> you have many adoring fans, though. Lots of oh. lots of love coming through in the Q and A. Our new team member Richard also says it's a lovely and inventive twist on the portrait, and it's very fun and feels almost like a sculpture. Yes. Um, and we also have Lisa, who says thanks so much for this opportunity to learn. 
Uh, I'm very excited to engage in this process on my own and to see what others create. Just enjoyed it tremendously. And thanks to everyone who's made it happen. Yes, and I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you to so much Hospital Rooms for um, giving me this opportunity. And I'd also like to thank um, Stephen, my assistant, who's really helped me today. Oh, it's been so amazing to see your process and see where all of those, um, because I've been following your work for some time and it's just so, it's just amazing to see how um, quickly those compositions take shape and um, the processes behind your work. Um, yeah, we've got a few more, <laughs> well, lots more coming in, which I'll let Molly read out before we um, go. Yeah, I'm rushing today and it feels like <laughs> I can, you know, Oh, do you want to, if, if, if possible, could you hold up the um, the watercolour to this screen now that we've lost um, the aerial view? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a shame about the aerial views. We had it on. We had it on for most of us, so it's fine. Yeah, we've got another one saying that this is so, so different from anything that I would normally be drawn to, but you've made it such an exciting way of working. Oh, that's great. So probably great, but can you see? Oh, yeah, that looks great. Wow. I love that that's come from the, the collage. It's, everything has happened so quickly. It's amazing. Yeah, the, you, you'd be surprised. You can get very, results happen very kind of quickly. I'm just going to try to look see what it said to my phone. Low battery. Yeah. We can just read the other comments um, while you um, while you wait because we've got a few more and it will be nice, yeah, just to to read them all out to you. Did it come back? It has come back now. Oh yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah. It, it's on the it's on the portrait orientation, but yeah, I don't know what happened there. Can I change it that way? Oh, it's not done. Yeah, that works. So uh, we've also got a hello from across the pond. Thank you for the collage inspiration. It's something I've always wanted to try from Joanne. And big thank you to Hospital Rooms from Bernadette. Said see you next week. And from Sarah, thank you so much and being so generous with your sharing and your work is so beautiful, which I think is definitely from all of us. Oh, thank you. I feel like I'm a bit constrained here because of the, um, usually I'd have, I'd have more room, but, um, that having the um, the camera where it is meant that I had to have the palette here, and I feel you know feel a bit constrained. So always make sure that when you're working that you're completely comfortable. Well, yeah. Sorry about that, David. Maybe. Oh no, no, not at all. Not at all. It's. Uh, it's just only something that I've noticed now. Yeah, <laughs> this is right at the end. Oh well, so so brilliant. Um, and thank you so much. It's been it's been really mesmerising. And thank you um, for giving us an hour of your time. It's been oh, yes, yeah, you're most you're most welcome. So I'm just going to kind of carry on with this, and yeah. you know, hopefully, I'll have an opportunity when it's finished to. Um, post it up and um, if people kind of come back, they can yeah. see the finished piece. Yeah, that would be fantastic if we if um, you could send us that and then we can share it with everyone. Yeah. And just to reiterate to everyone who joined, please do upload um, the work that you've made this session in the link that will be sent in an email to our online gallery. And also David's live um, session will be available on YouTube very shortly. So look out for that too. Um, we'll be emailing you all in due course. There's so many messages coming in. I don't think <laughs> we have enough time to share them all, but they're really, really lovely. Um, but we'll download this chat and we'll we'll definitely make sure that we share these comments with you, David, because there's some really lovely ones coming in. Um, so thank you so much to everyone for joining our first session. And um, please do sign up and register for the next ones too. We can't wait to have you back um, and look out for for more from us soon.